It is, it is so awesome to start off our year with God. Um, this is a time of the year that it's, God gives us an opportunity. And I love that years start over because we can start over and we can make new commitments. And you're going to be a, a byproduct of the habits that you develop. Um, but before you could develop a habit, you have to develop first a commitment. And, and what God wants you to do, he wants you to be committed because he's 100% committed to you. And then he wants to help you fulfill your commitments. And you can do that. By the time that we're done in these next, let's just say, next 21 days, I really believe that we're going to break old habits and start new habits. I really believe that. Uh, and for some of you, for some of you, it's been a cycle of maybe starting, not finishing, starting, not finishing. Or you do well for a while and then you just fall in a place that makes you feel shameful, makes you feel like a failure, and then you just give up. Uh, understand this. God can help you and transform you and your character. How many believe that? That's what God does. He changes people. All he needs is for us to be willing to say, okay, change me, transform me. For some, it's going to mean freedom by the end of these 21 days. That means you're going to get set free from depression. You're going to get set free from a suicidal spirit. You're going to set, get set free from a curse that's been over your life or your family. Something's going to happen these next 21 days for some, it might mean that you're going to get a word from God that's going to change your whole trajectory of your life. That you're going to hear from God and you've been confused about what life is about and God's going to show you your purpose and then he's going to give you clear vision and your life will never be the same after this fast. For some, it's going to mean a massive breakthrough. That means a sudden breakthrough. It's been like, man, it just seems like I, I just get stuck at this same place over and over. And, and I just feel like get, I can only get so far. I feel like a dog on a chain. I just go so far and I get pulled back. And God's going to say, no, you're not going to be pulled back anymore. It'll be more like a slingshot. You're going to be sent out. How many believe that those things are going to happen in these next 21 days? Um, I... I am so proud of every one of you here. Praise God, Wednesday night. Come on, this has to be the biggest crowd in the Inland Empire right now on a Wednesday night to serve Jesus and worship Jesus Christ. Come on, let's give some praise to worship Jesus. Wow. There's a few things we're going to commit to. Um, we're going to commit to this 21-day fast. Say, say this word, Commit. You know, I, I, went, I met a girl in, in Puerto Rico on, um, last summer. It wasn't Lisa. It was another. No, I'm just kidding. See, you guys are messing me up already. I met a girl in Puerto Rico as we were on vacation with our family. All right, let's clear this up. Right? And um, my, my daughter, Amarisa, we just went out to enjoy ourselves in, in, in a... In the, all day at the beach, and she don't like the beach. She don't want to put a bathing suit on. She don't want to get in the water. She just doesn't want to do that. So she's sitting in her jeans, just sitting there in the hot sun. Well, when we got home, she said, um, Dad, will you take me to the pool? Because I'll do the pool. And I go, I'll, I'll go. Nope, everybody was tired from the whole day. But I took, me and Amarisa went to the, the pool in the hotel. And when we got to the pool in the hotel, we were just kicking back at the pool. And some, some girl, um, she, she asked Amarisa if she wants some chicken nuggets. And then, and then Marisa says, yes. And then she turned to me, would you like some chicken nuggets? And I go, mm, okay. <laughs> right? I didn't want to say no, so I took the chicken nuggets. I didn't know what that conversation was going to end up like. But I, but I knew this, if she was engaging with me, I was going to share Jesus with her. I came all the way from the United States to Puerto Rico. We're in a pool. God has, must have an appointment with you. Do you understand the greatest thing that could ever happen in your life is that your life is transformed and then you become a life transformer? 
You're, you're, you'll never be happy until you fulfill your purpose. And your purpose is not you. Your purpose is reaching people wherever you are. Come on. Let God flow through you. You receive it, you give it. Someone say you receive it, you give it. So I'm sitting there by the pool. And she begins to share her story about her boyfriend. He goes, that's him over there. When I, when, she goes, look at him. So I looked over there. And I'm talking to his girlfriend. So I don't know if this is even a good idea. But when I look at him, he could barely walk. He's so drunk, he can't walk. And she goes, she goes, it's so embarrassing. We came over to celebrate his birthday from New York. And, and yesterday, we almost got kicked out of the hotel because when he gets drunk, he gets violent, he gets crazy. So they called the police and security. I had to take him to the room. And he's drunk again by the pool. But he's so drunk, he could barely walk, right? So I began to talk to her about God and about transforming her life. And she goes, wait, 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 wait. You want to talk to me about God? She goes, this is crazy. My friend invited me to church last week and I went to church and they started a fast and I just joined in. She's not even, a, she just, she's not a believer. She just joined in on the fast. But as soon as she joined in on the fast, this is what happened. She made room for God to begin to speak to her. And God says, okay, I'll take the pastor from San Bernardino. I'll put him right there in the pool to speak to you. Because anytime you're fasting, you get God's attention. Come on, give God some praise. Soon as you say yes to fast, you're saying yes to a move of God. This is what I did. I started witnessing, sharing my faith with her. Her boyfriend came over. They were ready to kick him off. Security came. They are ready to take him and, and, and send him off the pool area. He's not safe. He's going to jump in the pool. He's going to drown. Something's going to happen crazy. So security's ready to take him, and I stop security. I go, security, I'll handle him. I'll take care of him. And I told him, sir, just sit down right here. He's like, well, I go, I'll hold your hand. Come here. Sit down right here. So what I did, I shared Jesus with both of them for a half hour to an hour. And while I'm sharing Jesus with him, he says to me, he goes, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is what I needed. Thank you so much. And he started crying and holding me. All I'm saying, all that begun because somebody decided. It wasn't me. God decided. Someone decided to do a fast. As soon as they decided to do a fast, God started putting everything in order. God's going to start putting things in order starting this fast tonight. Are you guys ready? I know it sounds crazy. But if you want something great to happen in your life, you're going to have to make some radical commitments. See, most people want big change with little commitment. If you want big change in your life, then this is what I want you to do. Commit to the 21-day fast. Get your daily, we ordered 500 more daily um, growth books. The first 500 right, right now, the first 500 that pre-order are the ones that are going to get it. We're, we're, we're right now putting those books as fast as we can. Those books are going to change your life because this is what happens. You're a byproduct of your content and what you're, what you're, what you're consuming. So you got to be careful what you're consuming. Don't expect great things to happen when you're consuming junk. So in this fast, I want you to, I want you to do this. Also, this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fast not only food. I'm going to fast food. But I'm going to fa fast also some YouTube, some Facebook, some Instagram. I, I don't, I'm not there on Facebook and Instagram, but YouTube I am. I watch fights on there. I watch cars on there. I'm just crazy. I watch people that get arrested for dumb stuff. You're dumb. I, I, last night I watched two or three videos of guys impersonating officers. You know, like, you're not an officer. Well, you know, it's, it's just crazy stuff. I, but I'm going to fast that. That's how spiritual I'm going to be in these next 21 days. I'm... Imagine, imagine I'm still spiritual after all that junk. But we're going to do this. I'm going to fast my UFC fight in for a little bit. Um, I, I, I don't know why I said that. Maybe I should. And no, I was kidding. Okay, I commit. <laughs> That's nuts. All right, I'll do it. I'm going to fast, you know, watching Corvettes and cars and politics. <laughs> I'm going to, for, for 30, 21 days, 
and I'm going to focus. The reason I'm going to replace content, and I'm going to right now make, make my mind up. I'm going to fast that and replace it. Someone say fast and replace. Fast and not replace it makes no sense. You're not, you're not here to say no to, no to food. You're here to learn how to say yes to God. How many understand that? You're saying no to food so you can say yes. All right, let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this time. I'm so proud of our church. We're here on Wednesday night. We know what this night is about. It's about fasting. And Father, your church has showed up. And really what they're saying is, God, we want you more than we want food. That's a big deal. And just like that young lady didn't even know what she was doing, she wasn't a Christian, but she heard some instruction, and she goes, I'll do it. And she, she started fasting. And I thank you, Lord, because she started that, you began to speak to her. You've always wanted to speak to her. And that she would know was you speaking to her. This is going to be a time where you're going to speak to us. We're going to overcome. We're going to be free. We're going to have encounters with you, Jesus. You're going to visit us in your dreams, in our dreams. You're going to give us visions, insight, personal breakthroughs, church breakthroughs, business breakthroughs. It's going to happen in these next 21 days. We just thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So tonight, for these next few moments, it's not going to be long because we already know what fasting is, but I'll break it down just a little bit more. But if you have a pen and paper, you can write and take some notes. I always recommend um, when you're in church, come to learn and study. And one of the best ways to learn is to take notes. Whether you do it on your phone or, or you do it with a pencil and paper and a little journal, you'll always get more when you write down the information just like in school. You always want to get to a point where you gather the information and understand the information so you could apply the information so that you could teach the information. Because God wants every one of you to become teachers of his word. So today we're going to talk about growing through fasting. Growing means the process, the act or process of developing, increasing, advancing, expanding, improving, succeeding, building, multiplying, and maturing. All these things can happen through fasting. That means that you could have some accelerated maturity that comes out of these next three weeks. Accelerated advancement accelerated success. This could be a time of developing, growing, increasing. That's what God wants to do through fasting. And let's cover the second word, fasting. It's a time that we are committing. Say with me, committing. And I'll just stop there. I just want to make sure if you're going to commit to 21 days, commit to 21 days. Don't commit to 21 and do five. Commit to the 21. And after the 21 days, commit to this. We're going to have three services. Say, say this with me. Three services on a Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. At the end of the month, put it on your calendar because we're going to have some celebration time. God's going to speak to us on our impartation services. You do not want to miss the three days. So this is what I want you to do. Commit to the fast and commit to the impartation services. Commit to showing up every week in the house of God. Commit to studying the Bible every single day. But it's a time that we are committed to abstain from food. A true fast abstains from food. Um, you can't say I'm going to fast Netflix and say I'm fasting. You could add fast and Netflix to your food fast, but it's not a fast until you're fasting food. Why do you fast food? Um, or some kind of food or drink for a spiritual purpose. So you fast for a spiritual purpose. Fasting is choosing God over everything, including food. You, we, we see, the, it's interesting, in the Bible, do you know the first sin was food? God told Adam, don't eat of that tree. And what happened? He ate of the tree. Food. Do you know the first temptation that Satan gave Jesus was food? He said, turn the bread. Turn, I mean, not the bread. See, I'm thinking about bread already. <laughs> turn the stone into bread. 
And then Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by, every, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. What he was saying, you're trying to get me to give in to my lower nature, and you're trying to control me through my appetites. No. How many believe that you could get control over your appetites? You could get control. Come on, you could get set free from the alcoholism. You could get set free from the weed. Come on, you could get set free from the lust. You could get set free from the pornography. Your appetites should not rule you. You should rule your appetites. So, from food, food. Um, it is a time, fasting, is a time where we are, we're practicing the spiritual discipline of denying ourselves to follow Jesus and his will. Fasting is a time where we've developed the habit of saying yes to God and no to our flesh and the devil. We have to be, and fasting does, it also allows you to recognize the voice of your flesh and the voice of God. When you're fasting, it's real simple. The voice of the flesh is going to say, go ahead and eat that in and out burger. And the voice of the spirit says, no, we're choosing God over in and out. So, but, but why is that important? Because that voice comes in so many ways. Lie here, cheat here, lust here, watch this, watch that. And if you learn how to say no to that voice early in the year and learn how to say yes to God early in the year, this is what it's going to be. It's going to be a great year because you're going to allow God to lead you instead of allowing your lower nature to lead you. Right? Um... The lifestyle that should go with fasting. Um, we, should not, we should fast food, but we should also fast negative talk. That would be kind of crazy. You're fasting and you're just cussing, gossiping, talking about people, capping on everybody. So we're going to fast, but we're also going to have a fasting lifestyle. Fast negative talk. Fast secular content and replace it with spiritual content. Pray and study the word. And then it should also be a, life, a time of repentance. You know what repentance means? Changing of your thinking. And what you're saying is, God, change my thinking for your thinking in this time. So what are we going to do to prepare for a year of supernatural growth? We're going to acquire the daily book and commit to studying it daily. We're going to sign up for the next step of growth journey. We're going to attend all impartation services. We're going to give a first fruit offering. And we're going to participate in a 21-day Fast, 21 days. Three types of fasting. You might be saying, Pastor, how do I fast? Well, I'm glad you asked. Okay, there's one fast that's a, it's, it's a, I'll call it a full fast. And what I mean by that is you're just going to drink water and juices and liquids for 21 days. I don't recommend that unless you have a doctor's write you off on this. I don't want anybody dying on this fast and then. CNN comes over here. It's a cult, man. It's, it's, right? I don't mind you doing it. If God's telling you, you can check with your doctor. You're good. Go ahead. But you might have to get some checkups on to do that one, right? But um, the other fast is, is a Daniel fast. And we see this in the Bible. This would be no meat, no sweets. Oh, Lord, help us. Drink only water and juices. Eat only fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, and seeds for 21 days. You could also do a partial fast. That means you fast from six, you fast until 6 p.m. Or, or 5 p.m. or something like that and eat a light meal after the time. Now, now understand, you are not going to do a partial fast and then make up for every meal you love. It's feast time. <laughs> you're missing the purpose. Understand this. If you do that, you're going to gain weight in the fast. And if you're gaining weight on the fast, we know you did not do it right. <laughs> what, what happened? I don't know, man. Those air, the air has a lot of calories. <laughs> when you clean up the air, right, you're not going to gain weight breathing air. You're going to gain weight, taking in a lot of calories after fasting all day. So the idea, if I'm going to fast until 6 p.m., 5 p.m., this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to eat a light meal. Uh, I'm going to probably practice the Daniel fast myself, 
right after that. I'll eat a little soup or, or I'll eat a salad and then I'm out. That's what I'm doing, okay? So you say, well, that's mostly what I'm going to be doing. Now, you could practice some of this. You could, like, mix it up. Well, the first two days, I'm going to do a, a, a liquid fast. Then I'm going to, the next day, two days, I'm going to do Daniel fast. But just stick to whatever you commit to, okay? So what does Jesus say about fasting? Jesus expects us to fast. In Matthew 6, 16, it says, and when you fast. He used an interesting word. He didn't say if you fast. Believers are supposed to fast. It should be a discipline that you practice. And this is what I've seen. Those who practice the discipline of fasting on a regular basis are very powerful people. Because what steals our strength is our self-will, our temptations, our lusts. And if you get to the point that you choose God over even your desire for food, this is what it's going to do. It's going to develop your spiritual life. And this is what's going to happen. God will begin to entrust you with his true riches because he can entrust you with, with, with stewarding your own body. How many want to have power over the devil? You want to have power over the devil? Then you need to get power over your flesh and over your mouth and over your attitude. I want power over the devil. God says, you can't even tame your mouth. Right? We're going to practice taming our anger. This is what's going to happen, so don't trip if this happens. Soon as you start fasting, it's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So what are you talking about? The worst part of you is going to come up. Oh, I thought I was going to get more spiritual. Yeah, we have to get it all up and out of you. So don't think like I'm messing up on this fast. Nah, all that's happening is fasting is calling out the devil in you, and the devil rises up. Ah. Head starts turning. Ah! That's all right because before, come on, before there's a resurrection, there has to be a death of something. And I'm telling you, that flesh doesn't want to die. But we're going to go ahead and say flesh. We're going to walk in the spirit. We're not going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. We're going to accomplish everything God has called us to accomplish. And I already know this. This year is going to be a year of growth, and it's going to start right now. Um, I, was, I was at at Mathis Brothers two days ago. And I was just looking, I'm not buying, but we did buy two chairs and took them back the next day. I don't know if we're just wanting to feel like we bought something. But anyways, I, I ran into a salesperson that was there and, and I'm talking to him and he goes, man, I hope this is a great year. I hope that is a great year because you know, sometimes they don't start off that great. And I go, I go, this year? I told him, I just told him, this year is going to be my best year. This is a year of growth. This is a year of increase. This is a year of breakthrough. He goes, what? I told him just like that. He goes, I told him, because understand this. Your year has nothing to do with luck. Your year has to do with choices. And if you choose to do what's right, the word of God says, what you do not, God will not be mocked. Whatever a man sows, he reaps. So all I need to do is just choose the right choices and I already know the outcome. I'm going to have a great year. And the choice that I've made, I'm following Jesus and his word. He goes, he goes you know what he said? I just found out he's a Christian. He goes, amen, brother. I, didn't... I go, okay. Okay. Then I'm just reminding you then. How many understand this life doesn't need to be, come on, stop hoping, stop dreaming, stop wishing, and start living this life intentionally. Start doing it God's way. Deny yourself. Deny the lust. Deny the sin. Deny the weed. Deny the drinking. Deny the adultery. Come on, deny the porn. And say yes to Jesus. And say yes to prayer. And say yes to his word. And say yes to his purpose. And say yes to your call. And if you say yes to God, God's going to say yes to everything in heaven. He's going to download it into your life. He said, I'm looking for someone that will learn how to say yes to me because my promises are yes and amen to you. 
Your biggest problem is you're saying yes to the wrong things and no to the right things. You know how you're going to get to your destiny? Yesing yourself into it. My mom always told me, look, if someone's asking you to do ministry, say yes. She said, it's not the devil. Someone's asking you to go to church, say yes. It's not the devil asking you to go to church. I remember um, there was a time where I was single and looking for a wife. Some of you guys are in that position right now. And I'm going to tell you how you miss your wife. You stop saying yes to God. Because the wife that God has for you, young man, is going to be found in the will of God. Ladies, come on. You know how you find your husband? Your husband going to find you. But he should find you in the house of God. He should find you praying. He should find you worshiping. You want a man that's looking for a woman of God. You don't want to be found in the club. You don't want to be found out there in the streets. You want to be found in the house of God doing the will of God. Come on, give God some praise. Just start saying yes into your destiny. So, how, how I found Lisa and how Lisa found me. <laughs> it was just a yes. We were a yes away from meeting each other. I go to church. I've been going to church on Mondays, Wednesdays, and having a leadership meeting on Tuesdays. I would say I did that for 30 years. At this time, I did that for years, 10, 15 years on this time. Go to church on Sunday, go to church on Wednesday, have some type of Bible study on Tuesday in our house. So that was our schedule. And, and someone invited me to a home Bible study, and I really didn't know these people. It was in Rialto. I'm from Fontana. It wasn't like I was a gang member. It had nothing to do with that. But it just was inconvenient. <laughs> One city. But it was a Saturday, too. And I had my lower truck with, the, with the, my boom box in the back. And yeah, I did. House speaker. I mean, that house speaker was so big, I'd be... I didn't have room and room to sit. I was like, boom, 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 boom. But anyways, I got invited to a Bible study. That's all I'm saying. Lisa got by, invited to the Bible study the same day. I said yes, and Lisa said yes. She said yes to the will of God. I said, it wasn't the devil asking me to go to church. It wasn't the devil asking me to do ministry. It wasn't the devil asking me to study the Bible. You have to learn how to identify the voice of God and say no to the other voice that tells you sleep in. I don't want to do that. Not Wednesday night. I'm tired. Let's go shopping at Walmart. No, you got to be in the house of God. There's a time to shop at Walmart. There's a time to do your thing. But then there's a time to worship God. But don't mix it. I was yes away, like, but bam, X marks the spot. She said yes. That day, she got saved. She was not only saved, she got baptized in the Holy Spirit, started speaking in tongues her first day, coming to a home Bible study, never went to church her whole life. She had an encounter with God. My mom started mentoring her, and that's how she started hanging out in my house. I'm sorry. <laughs> Who are you mentoring? What's your name? You're going to have some wonderful stories this year. You're going to start yesing yourself to, into your destiny, and you're going to start saying no to the devil. Come on. No to your flesh. No to your comfort. Come on. It's time to stretch. It's time to push. And it's time to live differently so you start getting different results. It's crazy to think that you're going to get a different life, a different marriage, a different relationship, a different outcome, and you keep doing the same old, same old. Stop thinking you're going to get a breakthrough in a bad routine.
I just felt like doing it. <sighs> okay. And that was just when the Bible says, and when you fast. <laughs> when you fast, I'm going to have to do part two on Sunday. When you fast, don't make it obvious. So you know why it says that? You're not fasting to impress people. You're fasting to connect with God. What's wrong with you, brother? Fasting. It's hard. Only spiritual people do that, and I just pretty spiritual. You look sick. I know. If you were fasting like me, you would be sick. Don't make it obvious. Don't make it what? Obvious. As hypocrites do. You know what he's saying? If you're fasting to impress people, you're a hypocrite. You know what a hypocrite is in the, in, 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 in the, in the Greek? A hypocrite is an actor. You're acting spiritual, but you're not because you're doing this to impress people. You're actually prideful. And God, does, God resists the proud. He, he don't give grace to the proud. He don't give power to the proud. Come on, you got to humble yourself. This is a time for us to humble ourselves and realize this. I'm fasting because I need to fast. I need more of God. And this stuff that's been within me, holding me back, it must be broken now, early in the year. I don't want to fight this 365 days a year. I want to I wanna slay this demon early. Fasting calls out the devil. When you're fasting, oh, I don't want to fast because, because I don't want to be attacked. No, you're doing the attacking. You're just calling them out. Say, you can't hang out in this family anymore. Whatever is there has to come to the surface. I'm calling you out right here, right now. And greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. And let me tell you, devil, I am more than a conqueror through Christ. So let's throw down now in this 21 because the rest of this year is going to be victory after victory. Okay, for they try, don't be a hypocrite, for hypocrites try to look miserable and disheveled so people admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that is the only reward they will ever get. Imagine you missing the point of fasting. You're trying to get applause of a whole bunch of people can't, that can't help you. And God says, you want that reward? Trying to be religious and spiritual? That's not what we're doing. It actually should produce the opposite. I need you, God. We're ready to fight. And whatever comes up, let it come up and let's get rid of it. You understand? Come on. Is there stuff you need to get rid of that's been hindering you from moving forward? Let's deal with that now. Do you believe this, that the devil has strategies against you? The Bible says, put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the strategies of the devil. That means the devil has strategies. And I'll tell you the thing about the devil. He's patient. He'll wait for the perfect opportunity when you're the weakest to attack you. That means that this year he has some things planned out to destroy you and your family. You don't know what it is, but God knows what it is. And God says, when you start fasting, we're going to go ahead and flush out all those plans of the enemy. And what we're going to do is get victory early. When Jesus started his ministry, he started with a 40-day fast. He goes, devil, if I'm going to face you my whole life, let's go ahead and handle this right now. Let me defeat you right now. And then when I walk through ministry, I have authority over you because I defeated you in my last fast for 40 days and God is saying there's things that were planned against you but they're going to be canceled out and you're going to overcome every one of those hindrance and barriers early in the year in your first 21. Give God some praise. Come on, let's get the victory now. And I'm going to just say this last thing because Sunday we'll cover, this is what we're going to cover. We're going to cover how we grow through fasting. It's going to be good. So we're going to grow through fasting. Yeah, and you're going to show up Sunday too. <laughs> All these commitments, what's going on around here? Come on, don't, don't act silly. 
little rabbit. You know. You know. Don't, don't act like it's too much. I mean, you know how committed you were to your insanity. You know how, you, how committed you were to that abusive boyfriend and, and you were, oh, well, one more chance, one more chance. You know how committed you were to that crazy drug? Caused you to lose your family, lose your money, lose your health, well, lose your house, and then you started robbing people you love. You were that committed, and now Jesus comes into your life, and you think Sundays are a little bit too much? The devil messed you up. He bound you up. He depressed you up. He excited you up. He, pulled, he put you full of fear, and now God is saying, I delivered you. Are you ready to see more deliverance? Are you ready to allow me to flow through you so I can touch some other people? This is your season. It's not too much. Because the greater the preparation, the greater the manifestation. Do all you can do, and I'm so proud of you you're here. Now, there's people watching online that need to watch online because they can't be here. But if you could be here, there's a big difference being here than there. Don't expect to get massive breakthrough with minimum effort. There's times you gotta show up when you're tired. There's times you gotta show up when, come on, when you got your heart broken. There's times you gotta show up when, come on, they just diagnose you with something. There's times you gotta show up when your kids are acting like a fool, but you're saying, I'm not gonna let you stop me from praising my God. I've learned that's just a distraction. I'm going to the house of God and I'm gonna ask God for some help here. Get some freedom here. You got to break the habit of not going to church. You can't get in shape if you don't show up to the gym. And you can't get in shape spiritually if you don't show up to the spiritual gym. It ain't going to happen. If you don't have the, the, the discipline to show up to church, you don't have the discipline to fight. But I'll tell you this. I told you about UFC, Ultimate Fighting Championship. I tell you, when I watch those things, I want to fight. <laughs> what? Because when I watch it, I feel like I can do it. But the truth is, I can't do it. And some of you guys are watching stuff. He goes, you ain't participating, you ain't practicing, and you feel like you could do it. But you go out there without the preparation, and you're going to get whooped. Let's get filled with the Spirit. Come on. Let's, come on. Let's, let's, let's obey. Come on. Let's yes, sir, to our Lord and Savior. He says, show up to church. Yes, sir. Do the fast. Yes, sir. Show up to impartation. Yes, sir. Come on. Let's give God some praise if he's your Lord and he's your Savior. And God expects us to fast. Someone say, God expects us to fast. Number two, and this is going to be the last point. Jesus promises a reward for fasting done with the right heart. Because I promise you, it's going to be worth it for you. Now, if I was telling you it would be worth it for you, that would be one thing. But if God's telling you it would be worth it for you, we're in. Because God, in no, God already knows the reward, the blessing that you need. How many, that's, how many know that's good news? He knows what you need before you even know what you need. Matthew 6, 17, next verse. It goes, when you fast, what? Is there, a, is there an assumption here that we're supposed to fast? Comb your hair. Like, don't be showing up here all jacked up, hair all, ah, you just woke up. You know what he's saying? Look pretty, women. And look handsome, men. Comb your hair. Wash your face. 
then no one will notice that you're fasting except your father who knows what you do in private and your father and your father and your father who sees everything will not might I will reward you what I'm looking for is some people that have a private life come on with me that have a secret life with me because your secret life is your life I say that one more time your secret life is your life because a lot of us could act really good in public but private? The freaks come out at night. The freaks come out at night. Private. I can't wait till everybody leaves so I can do my private sin. Oh, yeah, here, here wife. Here's 50 bucks. Go get yourself something. So I could bring out my stash, so I could bring out my porn, so I could bring out this, and I could bring out that. No one will ever know. I'll clean it up. I'll put some breath mints. We'll be ready to go. I love this cycle. And God says, I see your secret life. Do you think your public life speaks? Your public life does. See, we'll do stuff to impress each other even in church. We could sing up here. We could preach up here. But the real weight is in our private life. Amen? Come on. Because I see, he goes, when you seek me in the private place, mm, I will, I guarantee you, reward you because I love when someone's private life, come on, is filled with the presence, with the word of God. I just, come on, I want to get away to just spend time with God. I want to study the word. I want to pray. Is there anybody here that their private life, you're dedicated tonight to Jesus Christ? I'll reward you. A return, that means a return, there'll be a return for your fasting, benefits for your fasting, honor for your fasting, profit from your fasting, gain from your fasting, a crown of victory for your fasting, and authority for your fasting. I love it. God knows what we do in private. Our private life is our true spiritual life. Not what we do to impress others. Our private life shows our true character and it carries great weight with God. Now, when we talk about fasting with the right heart, God does not acknowledge or reward fasting done with the wrong heart. So you understand that. Fasting is a time where we take personal inventory of our relationships in and outside the church. Fasting is a time where we get our hearts right with God and others. God would not accept our fast if we we're constantly fighting and bickering with each other. In Isaiah 58, 4, it says, what good is fasting when you keep on fighting and quarreling? This kind of fasting will never get you anywhere with me. So he's saying the relationships you have with me and others are tied, tied together. And what God is saying, this is a time where you're going to get healed of your hurt, forgive your enemies, and learn even how to love them. Because that's what I did for you. This it might be a time where you're going to start saying, I'm sorry or forgive me. God doesn't want us arguing and fighting with each other while we're fasting. I'm not saying that while you're fasting, a few little fire things won't, won't come out. Because you know what's going to happen when you're fasting, everything's going to come to the surface. But don't you stay angry. Don't you stay bitter. It's going to be a time to reconcile, not to continue the fighting. Amen. Come on. But if you do it with the right heart and you forgive and you receive forgiveness and you, we just stop the arguing and we stop the fight and start getting united, God is saying, get ready because the greatest reward that you've ever seen in your life is ready to hit you. And why did I say the greatest re reward? Because God saves the best for last. If you think I did something 2,000, come on, 2,000 years ago, what I said to you, you will do greater things than I even did. And what I did 10 years ago can't compare what I'm ready to do in 2023. I'm ready to reward you and honor you to a whole nother level. Come on, give God some praise if that's you. Let's all stand up. Get your, um, uh, get your book. Comb your hair. Love you guys. We're going to dismiss it in just a second, everyone. Just a second we'll dismiss. But this is a great time for many, 
to recommit to the Lord. I need to recommit. Okay? And there's nothing wrong with recommitting. It's a great thing. What you're saying, I'm recommitting to following Jesus Christ for the rest of my life. And when you make that decision, God's going to forgive you. God will set you free. God is not here to judge you, put you down. He's, he'll say something like this. I've been waiting for you. And everything that you need, I have for you. Um, understand this. When, when God becomes the center of your life again, or you commit your life to him, his spirit comes inside of you, begins to guide you and help you. But all of that, he transforms you. He sets you free. He'll restore you. And when you get restored, it overflows in your relationships with your children, with your wife, with your friends, with your coworkers. There's an overflow that's going to come out of your life. And people are going to start noticing, like, what happened to you? He said, well, I gave my life to Jesus. And he forgave me. And he set me free. And now I hear another voice. I just used to hear one voice. And that voice was tearing me apart. But now I'm hearing another voice. And the other voice, I'm shutting down. And God's voice is becoming stronger. And I'm hearing he loves me. He has a plan for my life. He has a purpose for my life. And I'm ready to see God's abundant life, his peace, his joy, his freedom flow in me and flow through me. How many want that? So now I'm going to give you an opportunity. How many are ready to commit to a 21-day fast? So just say this, one, two, three, I commit. One, two, three. All right, I saw that. I, I want you to get this. If you mess up, get back up. Who cares? I, it seems like I mess up every fast. But that's like trying to do practice perfect. Don't worry about having perfect practice. Just keep practicing. Who cares? I mess up all the time. Like last time I, I, was, I went to the mall and I got me... Um, I, I like those lemonades, at, at hot dog on a stick. And I just got the big one. Like, I was, I, something in me was like, get the big one. <laughs> and I'm over there drinking. And, and, and Lisa looks at me. I thought, we're fasting. I go, oh, my bad. <laughs> I go, but I ain't going to waste this money. Let me finish this one. <laughs> See, that's bad. See, that's bad. That's evil. <laughs> but that's why I need a lot of work. See, that's why I need to fast. <laughs> How many justify your stuff? And we need to be like, man, that was not right. But I'm confessing my sins for you so I can get safer from last year's sins and go into this new one. No, I'm just kidding. But God is good. And we love you. Understand this. None of us are perfect. We're all trying to do this. But the whole idea is God blesses our best efforts. But don't give up. Just keep coming. And it's going to prove it. In the, in the end of the year, 20, I mean, end of this month, and the end of the year, we're still going to be here. How many are still going to be here at the end of the year? Come on. You're going to still be, come on, you're still, still going to be here. You're going to be here, okay? So if, if you're saying, Pastor, this is a very important decision. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to begin to follow him. I'm tired of doing it my way. I want him to save me. I want him to forgive me. I want him to set me free. I want him to give me eternal life. Now understand, you do not have eternal life without accepting Jesus into your life. How do you get eternal life? Is you don't trust in religion you don't trust in your own good works. You're not going to get to heaven because you're good enough. If you actually think you're going to get to heaven because you behave so well or you're doing better, that's not how you get into heaven. You get into heaven by placing your faith in Jesus. He saves you. You can't save you. Salvation is a gift. Eternal life is a gift. Everything that God has is a gift. He wants to give you a gift. Eternal life. You receive it by faith. You receive it by, by believing. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever, whosoever believes in him or trusts in him as their savior will, have, will not perish, will not go to hell, will not be destroyed, but they'll have everlasting life, eternal life. How do we get it? By placing our faith. The, day, the moment we place our faith in Jesus and we say, Jesus, save me, he forgives you, he sets you free and gives you the gift of eternal life, which is life forever with him and also means a quality of life that you could have today. Jesus said, the peace I give you, the world can I give you. I was at a credit union today, and I started sharing. I, everywhere I go, I try to share the faith. I mean, just, I, I, just, I, I go, do you go to church, baby? She goes, no, I don't go to church. And I go, would you like to? She goes, my mom just got saved, and she's been bugging me. I go, I'm here bugging you now. Your mom sent me. 
But you know what? She, she was, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This Sunday, she's coming with her kids for the first time. She's going to get saved this Sunday. It's a decision. Someone say one good decision, at least another good decision. Now, if you're saying, Pastor, I'm not sure if I were to die, I'd go to heaven, but I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I want to receive the gift of eternal life. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand when I say three. Or I'm a Christian, but I need to recommit. And I'm ready to recommit. And God says, man, I've been waiting for you. If you draw close to me, I'll draw close to you. But it is a decision. Don't resist them. This is your time to accept everything that you've been looking for in life. One, I want to give my life to Jesus. I'm not sure if I die right now, I go to heaven, but I want to receive the gift of eternal life. Or I need to recommit. When I say three, raise your hands. One, two, three. Raise your hands all this building. I see that hand. Proud of you. I see the hand. See that hand. I see the hand over there. Come on. I see the hand way in the back. I see the hand there. Come on. I see the hand over there. Come on. There's a lot of people who are recommitted. Come on. We see the hand. We see the hand. We see the hand. I want those that raise their hand. Could you do me one more big favor? I'm going to ask for the privilege and honor. This is super important to me. But I know this. The Bible says this. So you know. Having faith without action produces no results. So I'm going to ask you to do one thing for me. I want you to leave your seat and just come up here. I want to pray with you. I just want to pray with you. And this is a sign of you leaving your old seat, I mean your old life, and following Jesus. This is your first step of following Jesus. You say, follow me. Just come forward real quick. Just come forward real quick, and we're going to pray with you. That's all we're going to do. We're not going to embarrass you. We're going to pray. Come on, give God some praise early in the year. Come on, the devil's losing souls already. This year is going to be different because we're choosing a different leader. Come on. Depression has to go. Fear has to go. Suicidal spirits have to go. Addiction has to go. Come on. It all has to go. Brokenness has to go. Self-destruction has to go. Unworthiness has to go. In the name of Jesus. Cycles, generational curses have to go. Now in the name of Jesus. Come on. Let's give God some praise early in the year. Someone say, Jesus is my Lord. Proud of you, baby. Proud of you. Love you. Love you. Love you, bro. Love you. Love you. Healing. Now, you're going to receive forgiveness now. And this is what you're going to do. You're going to receive it, and then you're going to forgive yourself too. You are not going to beat yourself up for the rest of your life. Your identity is not your failure. Your identity now becomes your savior. Come on. Your identity is not your, fa save, your, 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 uh, your, your failure. Your identity is now your savior. Okay? And I'm going to tell you this about God. He loves you, and you don't have to earn his love. He loves you, period. He doesn't change his mind about you, even when you change your mind about him. The scripture that says, even when we're unfaithful, he still remains faithful. So I still love you. Come on. Unconditional love. I love you. Start living for God. Stop loving sin. Let's love God. The sin, all it does is it leads you to deeper and deeper pain. Stop trying to medicate your own pain. Go to Jesus. He could heal your heart. Okay? He could heal you of your past. Let's pray. Pray. That's it. We're going to break the power of the enemy. We're going to fast for 21 days. We're going to show up on church. We're going to invite people. Pray is talking to God. That's all we're doing, talking to God. You're making a decision. I'm following Jesus for the rest of my life. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, thank you for not giving up on me, for loving me so much that you sent people to speak to me even when I was resisting it but you never gave up I thank you Jesus for loving me so much that you came to earth as a man to suffer and die to pay the price to be punished for my sins so that I could be forgiven I believe you died for my sins and you rose from the dead. You are alive right now. You're right here. And I open my heart and I ask you now, come in, save me, set me free, make me new and fill me now with your spirit. Today, I'm saved. I have eternal life. I am born again and I will follow Jesus for the rest of my life. I have eternal life right now. And devil, get out of my life. I'm serving Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Come on. 
Everybody here, God accepts you. He loves you. Come on, let's give them a big hand. Come on, people are giving their lives to Jesus. This Sunday, be here also. Um, Friday, we have women's ministry, women's unity night, and men's unity night. If you want to have another service, it's going to be a great service. First service for the women, first service for men. That's Friday at 7 o'clock. We'd love to see you here we love, if you're available. God bless you. We love you. You need prayer. Come on up. We would love to pray with you for your breakthrough. Everyone that came up here, your next step is just fill out a card. We'll get your information and help you get your next step. Baptism and Holy Warriors that starts next Tuesday.